Okay, I think we are good to go. Hey everyone, this is uh, Magdalena here with my friend, Dr. Marisa Snyder, who wrote this really cool book called The Smart Mom's Guide to Essential Oils. Let me just put the, uh, let me just make sure we got the view right. Um, there we go, okay. All right, speaker view. Yeah, so the cool thing about um, what I wanna talk about today is the fact that I feel like there's a lot of misinformation about essential oils. There's a lot of, um, you know, statements that are kind of scary to read. And so yeah, I'll give you an example, you know, like Facebook ads circling around going frankincense heals cancer, right? And, you know, do your three drops a day and it's all going to miraculously go away. I have a problem with claims like that. I feel like they are very dangerous. Uh, there is science behind frankincense, but while somebody is still, living off sugar, it's highly inflamed, it's living a highly stressful, toxic life. Uh, I just cannot imagine how anybody would feel safe to say that frankincense is going to solve it all and is going gonna, is gonna to take care of your cancer. I think it's, it's just, it just sounds right, wrong and it sounds incredibly dangerous. And so I've always been drawn towards people who are um, scientifically backed up, who do their due diligence on things like essential oils, which are have very strong chemical compounds in them. Let's not fool ourselves. You know, they are, they are pretty close to medicine. They are still in its natural form, but they're pretty close to medicine. I mean, these things are powerful and knows what to do with them. So I want to introduce you to my good friend, Dr. Marisa Snyder. Hi there, Marisa. Hi, Magdalena. Thanks for having me. Um, and one thing, let me just do one quick thing. Okay. Um, and so one of the things that she has done so well is put this book together um, for the for our essential oils um, called The Mom's Guide to Essential Oils. Now, Smart Mom's Guide to Essential Oils. So I just wanna, first of all, I just wanna preempt you by saying you don't have to be a mom to use this book, um, yep. right? So that's, that's the first thing. And you know, before we dive in, I just wanna give people a little bit of, um, of your background. So. First of all, I mean, you have background in biochemistry, certifications in nutrition and aromatherapy. Um, you graduated with Com um, Laude um, with a Life Chiropractic College West in 2008. And um, you have been focusing a lot in hormonal, in hormonal health. You've authored a number of different books that have been published uh, by publishers, including the Dash Diet Cookbook, which was, made it really big, right, at one point. Um, I know you also did the Matcha Miracle, which is one of my favorite other books of yours, uh, the Low GI Slow Cooker, Antioxidant Counter, Water Infusions. So she, she's penned a number of books, and this is, this is yet another one, which is awesome. And I actually didn't really think um, that it's going to be really a lot of new things I'm going to learn from it, but I actually did. And the recipes are, are just absolutely phenomenal, and we're going to be demoing some of them and talking through, through some of them. So I want to just start off by setting a little bit of a context why did you decide to write this book? I mean, don't we have enough books on essential oils already out there? That's a good question. Yes. And what I think I, what I found with, I, you know, I have an opportunity to connect with so many moms and families around essential oils. Cause a lot of women are really, well, let's be honest. A lot of us are just sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I think that's why essential oils have become so popular over the years that they've become a, a, a new solution for kind of everyday issues around the house. And what I found is that there were a lot of great books out there, but some of them were too, like, not that I don't love the science and I think the science is phenomenal, but some of them read like really big textbooks. And I would, I would recommend these great resources, these great textbooks, which I loved, but for some people getting started, it was just a little too much. And so I wanted to create a book that really guided people through kind of what they, the basic one-to-ones and even more, it goes into more than just the basics, but what does someone need to get started with essential oils? What does someone need to feel, to feel safe using essential oils, to have any of their fears dispelled? Because as you can imagine, when someone reads, add two drops under your tongue to treat cancer, that, that can really lend to fears and concerns and issues around like, well, are they safe to use on my kids? Are they safe to use on me? What's going to happen if I use too much? And so I wanted to write a book that really addressed a lot of the concerns and maybe worries about using essential oils and made it very practical and very easy to use. 
Right. Great. So, um, so let's get, let's just dive in straight into, you know, I'm, um, I'm really interested in the essential oil specifically for hormonal, um, imbalances because that's really what this community is about. So, uh, it's not the only application of course, but that's one of the hot ones. I want to talk about that, but before we dive in, I just want to announce to everyone that we've got some great giveaways. So first of all, stay on because Marissa is going to be showing, um, demoing a couple of recipes, which are really awesome. And anybody can make this at home themselves. No rocket science there. And number two is you've got some giveaways, Marisa, right? So can you just tell us about that? Absolutely. So one of the giveaways is going to be my Superwoman blend. Um, and this is this is a hormone blend that I created several years ago. I have used on a lot of my patients and, and on myself. I'll tell you, I've had my own hormone crisis in the past. And so this blend is, is a combination of clary sage, um, geranium, cedarwood, bergamot, lavender, and a little bit of ylang ylang. And so I'm going to be giving this away. I call it my superwoman blend because I consider it my reset blend. It's great for stress. It's great for cravings. It's great to really get fully present. And also it can help um, with adrenal issues. So it's just across the board, a really beautiful blend. It smells amazing. So I'm going to be giving this away. And I love, I love getting really fun roller bottle, blend, like roller bottles like this one. So I have it in a really cute little pink um, roller bottle so that it doesn't look, it doesn't look like a super, you know, scientific roller bottle. It's easy to keep, put in your purse. So I'm going to be giving this away. This is my own proprietary blend and thousands of women have loved that blend over the years. And then I'm also going to be giving away a signed copy of the actual book that we're talking about today as well. So awesome. I'm excited. So the criteria for giving the book away is going to be my team is going to be selecting. We're going to be selecting until um, on Monday morning. So you've got to basically um, we've got to watch it until Sunday. You've got the time until Sunday. It's Friday now. And uh, the way we're going to be uh, selecting is based on how good your question is for Marisa um, and also how much you've participated in the past. We kind of know the names. And so we want to reward those people who come in life and watch us. So, okay, awesome. Um, and so you mentioned, first of all, Clary Sage, right? And yeah. that's a big essential oil that a lot of people um, are, on the one hand, really fascinated by because it does have some connection to estrogen. But on the other hand, also we also get a lot of questions about Clary Sage coming from a place of fear and um, concern that clary sage might be elevating their estrogen levels and somebody has got estrogen dominance, it might not be a good idea then to use that oil. So let's talk about what's so great about clary sage and maybe debunk some of those myths. Absolutely. So clary sage is what well, is a beautiful essential oil. What we've seen research on, so I have a, a 2014 study that shows that just inhaling clary sage dramatically will decrease cortisol levels in the body. So helping to lower that chronic stress um, is all, as well as improving thyroid levels as well. And, and really what we're seeing there is that by helping the system calm down, by helping to breathe it in, uh, dealing with any stressor, that we are kind of shutting down that out what I call the outpouring of cortisol, which is having a major effect on our thyroid, on our estrogen and progesterone levels. And so I would say it's more of a stress reductor. Reductor, you know, we there is some findings, and they're relatively inconclusive about you know um, being an estrogen dominant driven essential oil. But we do know that it works mostly for women in perimenopause and menopause when estrogen levels are decreasing significantly. Now, if someone is dealing with estrogen dominance, I always say just be mindful about the amount that you're using. Um, so I always recommend anytime that you're using an essential oil to dilute it, um, at least I would say a 25% dilution for, for adults and even less for children. Not that I'm usually recommending clary sage for kids. Um, so those are some of the benefits, but mainly where I see clary sage be a winner is usually for reducing stress levels, helping for a restful night's sleep, and it can really be soothing to muscle tension as well. So if someone was dealing with, um, with, with, you know, uterine cramps that you could apply it topically to kind of calm those down. Um, and if clary sage wasn't an option for you there, you could use something like lavender as well, because lavender is antispasmodic. So yeah. those are some things to consider around clary sage. I really yeah, it's, it. it's kind of interesting. It's, I think it's a really good point you're making is that, you know, there's, there's research that shows um, that, yeah, that clary sage can increase estrogen, but that, that doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. Because even in women with estrogen dominance, the problem is not just the amount of estrogen, it's how the estrogen gets broken down to metabolites. 
and these the metabolites, the certain metabolites of estrogens that are harmful and others are protective. In fact, I'm sure you know about this study that uses clary sage, lavender, and rose for women with PMS, for girls with PMS, so still menstruating, right? Yeah. And significant reduction, 70% of them had a reduction of PMS symptoms. They were as effective as Advil. And so that's, you know, um, but then again, it's like what you said, try it and apply it. It's a really simple thing. If it makes your cramps worse, right, then you know that this is not agreeing with you. Right. Uh, it's the same thing with food, right? I mean, like, you know, I made ashwagandha latte the other day. I did, made this really great demo, right? People loved it. But then, then we had a few people who felt terrible on it because it's a nightshade. And, you know, and so it backfired big time for some people. So it's really about trying it out and see what works. Right. I mean, our bodies are individualized, right? And so we have to have an individualized approach. I know some people use lavender and it doesn't put them to sleep. It it has their brain running, you know, more wildly. And so it's really about figuring out what's right for you. Remember these, these, these the oils aren't hormones, right? So they're not going to produce hormones. However, they can drive reaction in the body to, to tell the body, hey, maybe we need more estrogen or we need less estrogen. So be mindful. Like I said, there are some studies that are showing that, 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 that clary sage acts as a kind of like a phyto, um, mm-hmm. a phytoestrogen because it can help trigger those cascades, help to metabolize, um, metabolize other metabolites inside of the body that can cause a little bit of an increase in estrogen, but it's really person to person. In a lot of instances, we do not see that. So I've been using clary sage for years and I don't struggle with estrogen dominance despite how much I've been using it for the last six years. Great. So let's talk about, um, should we just, what do you think? Should we just, since we own Clary Sage and that's one of the blends that you have, uh, that you want to show us, should yeah. we dive into the demo? Yeah. So one of the, one of the areas where I find essential oils really serve is around emotional well-being. And when we breathe in essential oils, so the aromatherapy of breathing an oil in. So for instance, I have a wild orange and if I were to put this wild orange on my hand, not only am I going to get like an instant energy burst. So if this is, I love waking up to this oil. Um, so I just rub it in my hands, breathe it in. This is called direct inhalation. And then just let, just let all of those amazing chemical constituents, those compounds go straight into the limbic brain. And and our sense of smell is by far the most powerful sense that we have. And when you're using these wonderful chemical constituents, they can have profound effects on the, on the limbic brain, the amygdala, the hippocampus, the mammillary bodies and the hypothalamus. And so what I want to recommend, what I want to do is do a blend that I call, um, like, why am I having a moment? Um, my overwhelm be gone blend. And I carry this blend with me everywhere. Cause let's be honest, overwhelm can strike at a second's notice, right? You're in traffic, you're late to a meeting. I know that we're heading into the, into the Thanksgiving season right now. And so a lot of people are running around getting their grocery list. They're getting ready to entertain people. There are definitely moments that can feel a little bit overwhelming. I know- oh yeah. You're hitting your right spot here. We just sent out an article about, you know, tools of coping, coping with stress before the holidays and how to address all this BS at the dinner tables with people going like, why is your weird, your diet so weird? Why are you not eating gluten? What is wrong with you? Right? What's the next fat diet you're doing? And so coping with all of that. And so, yeah, definitely. All my friends who are psychotherapists say that December, November, December, are the busiest months for them because of the stress that it brings on. So right. show us what can okay. we do? What does it look like and how do we apply it? Absolutely. So I love rollers because they are so easy. I'm not going to, I'm not going to use this one because I'm giving it away, but I, I love to apply this roller over my, let's just pretend this is my, my overwhelm be gone over my wrist, over pulse points, over my temples, because it eases that stress around my shoulder and neck. But the most effective way I found with the overwhelm blend is right over my palm like this, and doing that technique, that just deep breathing technique, three to five deep belly breaths. So here, I'm going to make it for you. Um, it's super easy. It's in the Smart Moms book. It's going to be 10 drops of lavender. So I'm just going to add 10 drops of lavender. I hope you guys can see this, Magdalena. Um, um, well, not in detail, but we can sort of, you know, figure out what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm going to take the bergamot. So lavender and bergamot are the most beautiful synergistic oils for lowering stress levels and for getting a good night's sleep. They literally just shut down that mental chatter. So these were a must must inside of this blend and bergamot. I don't know if you know, but it's the oil of self love and self reassurance and it smells so divine. So it's probably one of my absolute favorite oils ever. 
10 drops of bergamot and lavender. Bergamot is what's put in, um, into uh, Earl Grey tea, right? Yes, it's in the Earl Grey tea as well. And actually, I, I have diluted bergamot and I add a teeny little, like I'll take a little toothpick and swirl it in because that's what, that's what that bergamot is. Remember, uh, citrus essential oils are cold pressed from the rind. And so what they've done is they've just used that cold pressed extraction to add it to the Earl Grey um, when it comes to bergamot. Then we're going to be doing, so 10 drops of lavender, 10 drops of bergamot, seven drops of clary sage. So I'm just going to be adding the clary sage, this really pretty little green roller. And then it's going to be four drops of wild orange because wild orange is as uplifting and as wonderful as it is. When you're in a time of stress and overwhelm, this oil will just soothe your worries and concerns. So then I'm going to add fractionated coconut oil, but honestly, any carrier oil that you like, you can use. I just got this. If you can get it from Amazon, you can get it from any health food store, Rocky Mountain oil, whatever you guys, wherever you want to find it, super easy. I have this little, um, this little funnel that I put on top. Now with these roller bottles, because they're metallic and covered, you have to be a little bit careful because you can't really see how, how much oil is in here. And note that this dilution is around a 20 to 25% dilution. So if you're wondering what my dilution ratio was, that's the dilution. So I'm gonna add a little bit of coconut oil in there. So quick question here for you about that coconut oil. Um, doesn't that, uh, when you use essential, sorry, when you use that uh, coconut oil, um, so it's, it's enough, like how do we wanna make sure it doesn't harden up in cold temperature? Oh, so this is fractionated. So fractionated, fractionated coconut oil, okay. sorry about that. Fractionated coconut oils where they have removed the double bonds inside of coconut oil, which allows it to be room temperature at all, all seasons. Okay. Um, you can also use Jehovah oil. You can use almond oil, avocado seed oil. I prefer medium, um, medium chain fatty acids. They absorb into the skin better. So mm. avocado oil, um, almond oil, um, coconut oil, they all fit the bill there. Um, mm -hmm. And they just allow for better absorption. Then what you're going to do is you're going to just, you're going to snap the lid. You're going to mix it up like this and then just apply it to the areas that I mentioned, pulse points, the palms, back of the neck, um, where you carry tension over the temples. Those are all great places to put it. And then I would just literally, anytime you're feeling overwhelmed and you can feel that, maybe you're feeling a little bit emotionally triggered or your, your breath and your heart rate's getting a little bit faster, that's gonna be the moment where you're gonna get this oil out and use it to reset just those moments. Just take it literally five to 10 seconds to apply the oil, breathe it in, and I promise you're gonna feel significantly better. Okay, awesome. So we're gonna be, for those of you who are joining us late, Marissa is giving away her book, which is right here. She's got it on the counter and I've got it right here. You can see I've got it marked extensively. I wanna give you a couple of examples of recipes I really love in here. Um, and she's also giving the roller with the Superwoman. By the way, somebody just called it on Facebook Wonder Woman. You might want to rename it. <laughs> Ooh, Wonder Woman. Yeah, it's because Wonder Woman was kind of taken. And I have this thing around like the Wonder Woman syndrome as trying to be everything all the time. Right. Yeah. So I, I yeah. felt like, not that I don't love the Wonder Woman, I, but I was like, oh, what can I do that's a little bit different? And so we went with the Superwoman blend. Totally. Um, so, so Marisa is giving that away. That's in a roller in her book. For those of you who post out the best questions, my team is going to be selecting somebody on Monday. So you have time until end of Sunday to watch. So before we dive into questions and other, you got one more demo you want to show us, right? And we want to talk about a few other oils. I just want to tell you guys. So, you know, I know Marisa from the Bay Area, like when I lived in California, we met then. Um, but, you know, again, it's, it's a friend is a friend, but I also would only want to promote and introduce people who really know their stuff. And one of the cool things about this book is that, you know, what I, what I found really interesting is that um, she spends the whole first section talking about the essential oils you've got to have in your cabinet. So um, clary sage is one of them, and there's like bergamot and cardamom. And every one of them actually has the uh, primary constituents uh, that actually do the work like linalool and linalool acetate and, um, and cedrol and many, many more. And the interesting thing about them is those, those are actually active compounds in a lot of medications uh, that people take, right? So that's what's really cool about this is that is really this, you know, the science behind the oils and what they do for us um, because of these active uh, compounds. So constituents. 
Um, and some of the recipes that I just absolutely love that I actually made it myself is I know you've got the immune support blend. I really like that one. You've got a lot of different spray ideas, which is so refreshing, especially like over summer or um, when you just get a little bit tired and you, you spray it on your face, it's just absolutely wonderful. And uh, we've got like, she's got the household cleaning recipes, which is just like anything from a carpet freshener to a sticker and gum remover. That's if you have grandchildren and kids at home, that's a great one. Um, I mean, there are so many things, uh, vinyl floor cleanser. She's got stuff for kitchen, um, kitchen uh, uh, recipes of cleaning kitchen, natural person and beauty care products. Also a number of those uh, really, really nice ones. And um, aromatherapy blends for mood and focus purifying. So, you know, recipes that are specifically mentioning, like if you have sense of, if you're going through anxiety or sleeping problems, or you want to have a Sunday, there's a Sunday snuggle blend here as well, right? Uh, for meditation, for calming, uh, for abundance, for motivation, just really beautiful, beautiful blends that I have. Um, Marisa, I've actually tried a number of them based on your book. Um, I, I was reading it when I was um, in bed with my after surgery recovery. So I had, I needed light literature, you know, people were giving me a lot of heavy books to read. And I'm like, my mind is just not there to focus on things. I just wanted something light and easy. This was light and easy and super helpful. So, um, okay. So why don't we just dive into the questions and some of the comments I'm going to read out. Yep, absolutely. Um, so Luana is asking, what about allergies and asthma? Great question. So great, great question. So essential oils can really help to open up the airways. The, the number one go-to oil I consider for, for asthma and allergies is going to be eucalyptus, right? Eucalyptus is such a great, great essential oil, but I actually have a blend for allergies and asthma inside of the book. Um, and your go-to oils that we've seen the best. So lavender is, um, is a powerful antihistamine. Um, peppermint opens up airways. If you've ever breathed in peppermint, you can feel that just opens things up. And then lemon is a very powerful decongestant. It actually breaks up mucus. And so we, I love to use a combination of lemon, lavender, and peppermint for allergies. And we've had phenomenal success at a friend of mine who was literally almost died because he was born with such horrible allergies. And, and that combination has beat any drugs he's ever been on and it's natural. So he, he actually makes a little capsule every single day because that's how sick he gets um, before he goes to work it's just because it's a daily thing for him. And he, I think he does two drops of each. However, I normally recommend just topical application in a roller. So I usually recommend um, 10 to 15 drops of lavender, peppermint and lemon and then applied to the arm, to the bottom of the feet and to breathe it in. Um, and then my breathe blend, I'm just looking for it because I don't have them all just marked. There's a lot of a lot of blends in here, um, but usually it's a combination of peppermint, cardamom, lime, and eucalyptus. Th those are my go-tos for- hey, you guys, uh, so I posted the link to the book, uh, right? I, I never, I, I get confused with Facebook, whether it's up or down the video, whatever, you know, right? Like what the title of the talk is, there is a link to the book. I'll just go to Amazon and look for Smart Mom's Guide to Essential Oils, and yes. you're going to find it. Just a lot of... Really It'll be in there for sure. So yeah, those are my go-to oils. I mean, when in doubt, peppermint, eucalyptus are phenomenal for asthma, lemon, um, lavender, and peppermint for allergies. So um, awesome. So we have a lot of... Wow. This, I mean, this... Hey, you guys. So we're just going to pick a few because, I mean, there's a whole list of medical conditions just coming in asking which oil for what. And I just want to set a strong sense of context here that... Um, I feel like essential oils are a little bit like supplements that are really wonderful in supporting you in the healing path. But um, somebody's, for example, asking about thyroid nodules, and I'll let you talk to that, um, Marisa, about thyroid nodules. But before you do that, I just want to say, you know, it's thyroid nodules oftentimes are the result of estrogen dominance. There's a lot of studies that show that, right? So, you know, do essential oils itself can just completely resolve it? Maybe for some no. people they can. Maybe. Um, Maybe, right? But the, you know, but on the other hand, like if you're living a highly toxic life, if your liver is not in a good shape, if you are using a lot of commercial skincare products that bring in those external estrogens, you know, if you're eating, if you're living off sugar, your gut is messed up, right? You know, that breeds that environment for estrogen dominance. So would applying something externally take away that toxicity that's, that is creating, you know, and that's causing the, the nodules to grow? Very likely no. And so I really want you to um, 
say everything Marisa is teaching here, add it as an additional tool to your toolbox alongside with the nutritional changes that I always ramble on about, the things you can do, clean up your diet, add all these wonderful foods, add those essential oils in. Do not see this as the only way of treating a condition. Please, 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 please remember exactly. that. Exactly, yeah. I mean, essential oils, they are powerful, as we mentioned. They are, and there's a lot of research that demonstrates. We know that certain oils are antiseptic and antibacterial. They're great for helping to prevent colds and flus during the season. But really what we're looking at is, you know, it's like we're talking, someone asked me about asthma and allergies. Yes, the oils can help with that. But if someone's drinking you know, cups and cups of milk every day and eating a lot of dairy, all of that mucus formation, if you're going to continue to still have those issues, right? And it's the same thing with the thyroid. Like what, how did we get the thyroid there to begin with? Where did those nodules come from? Was it estrogen dominance? Was it an increased amount of cortisol due to adrenal fatigue? Was it toxicity? Was it, was it because of gluten, right? Or was it all of those things combined? So although, yes, I do have a thyroid recipe in the hormone section of this book, and I'll share that with you in just a moment. Note that the purpose of this recipe was really to help support the cells, help, to help, help the cells to really kind of get back um, to heal. However, it wasn't specifically, okay, this is what's going to heal the thyroid. And yeah, we've seen instant instances where people are doing all the other right things. They've added essential oils to their thyroid protocol and they, it made a huge difference. So I just wanted to just lay the groundwork for that. So my thyroid support blend, and I call it a support blend because it's just designed to support the thyroid, to support the cells inside of the thyroid. Um, it's a roller bottle. And it's 10 drops of frankincense because frankincense is a powerful um, cellular healer and it's great. It's anti-inflammatory. 10 drops of myrrh, same thing. The sequiterpenes there really support cellular function. Eight drops of lemongrass, four drops of clove because it's such a powerful antioxidant. And then four drops of peppermint because it's a stimulant. We want to stimulate some of that, um, some of that cell cell healing. So that is it. it. Then you fill the rest up with, um, with fractionated coconut oil or whatever carrier oil you prefer. And honestly, I don't always recommend even over the thyroid because some of these oils are so powerful and strong, it may actually irritate the skin. This is a pretty good dilution, but the best place to really apply this oil is on the bottom of the feet. On the feet? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. Awesome. So let me, uh, let's take a couple of questions and then let's then dive into the next essential oil recipe that you have, because I know you have to go. So we are on a little bit of a time limit here. You know, I love doing this so much, but I have another <laughs> interview. <laughs> I, uh, I know. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, we have a lot of copywriters here who are recommending names for you. Like every woman, <laughs> every woman. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> for your blend. Um, <laughs> This, I mean, this book was really made for women our age. I mean, I, not that it wasn't for moms with young kids, and I did do that. But when I wrote this book, I wrote it for me. I wrote it for you, Magda. I wrote it for so many women like ourselves. So this is, when I think about smart moms, I think about older mamas, like mamas who've raised their kids. But this is really a woman's book. Um, and so women without kids really can benefit this benefit from this book as well. Yeah, totally. I mean, yeah, it's uh, I mean, when I looked at it, I didn't feel like I was looking at uh, how to treat diaper rash kind of right. recipes. Exactly. It's, it's much more versatile than that. Um, yeah, gosh, I mean, Marisa, I, we got so many questions. I don't even know where to start from, to be honest. Uh, I'll just pick a couple. Jill okay. is asking, I've been using um, Kapoiba and loving it. We'd love to know what you ladies think. What was so Copaiba? She said what? Copaiba. And she wonders what we, what we think about it. And I think it's a good oil to talk about just for it because it's not the most common oil. No, it's not. So Cop I could tell you all about Copaiba. I've done all of the research. I did a ton of research for that oil when it came out because we had seen some really profound anecdotal um, evidence coming from that. And then scientific evidence, you know, it is a um, it's an, it connects to the endocannabinoid system, which is really our endocrine system. And so it has a lot of influence on um, not only our neurological system, our um, um, neuromusculoskeletal system, um, but also helping with depression and anxiety. So I think that oil is really powerful and profound, probably one of the hottest oils out there right now. Where I've seen it used most successfully is it does decrease inflammation. I've, I've recommended it post-surgery. Um, it's great for as a neurological tonic. Um, so if there were any type of neurological conditions, maybe it was a TBI or someone was dealing with a type of dementia, it could help support um, those types of neurological issues. 
Um, but then also it's very calming. It's, it's, it's very much a sedative too. And so, you know, I, be mindful. It's a very, very powerful oil. I normally only recommend, um, I usually, I always recommend dilution, but we're looking at, you know, two to three drops max a day because it's so, so powerful and effective. So just my recommendation for using that oil is just um, a little goes a long way. So more is not better. Okay, awesome. Um, a lot of questions coming in about menopause. Yes. Especially menopause, menopause and anxiety. So um, I think you need to be more specific. And when you say menopause, what are you struggling with, right? Because like, it could be anxiety, it could be lack of uh, problems with Hot falling flashes, into it yeah right. so wait, what exactly wait. is going on so let's talk about um you know i mean i know hot flashes is a huge topic in my community so let's talk about maybe somebody mentioned anxiety so let's talk about anxiety and hot flashes those two absolutely so i do have a lot of anxiety blends your, your go-to you know your go -to, there's again everyone's bio i you know individualized so some somebody may use a lavender or a clary sage and, you know, really have great, great success with anxiety, where then someone else uses lavender, and it makes them even more anxious. And so just be mindful, your biochemistry is going to be different than everybody else's. And note that if the oil doesn't do what you're looking for, you know, take a couple of days off, try it again, if you get the same result, maybe move along, right? So your go to oils for anxiety are going to be Roman chamomile, bergamot, clary sage, vetiver, um, and then cedar wood. Those are like my top five anxiety oils. The oils that have been most researched around anxiety are going to be cedar wood, lavender, and clary sage. Those are the ones I've read the most research. Um, and I have a lot of different blends. Now I find that when it comes to anxiety, blending blends do work the best. And so I do have some blends in here. The Overwhelm Be Gone blend is an anxiety blend. That's a great right. blend for anxiety. Mm -hmm. the, the hormone, um, the Superwoman blend is also a great blend for anxiety. So, you know, be, there's definitely a lot of oils in here. Just note that it's about breathing them in aromatically, taking 30 seconds to really do some deep belly breaths to kind of reset that anxiousness that you're experiencing. And always, always have the oils on hand, carry them in your purse, have them in your pocket, be ready. I, I deal with flight anxiety. I, I fly a lot and I get really horrible flight anxiety. And I never leave home without lavender, clary sage and cedar wood. I have a combination in a roller blend and I never ever leave or get on a plane without them. Awesome. Talk about the diffuser because not all diffusers are the same. And nope. uh, I want to talk about a little about the, what's the technology you recommend and why. So I, I love, so I love the ultrasonic diffusers. These are the water diffusers. They're quieter. Um, they, they can, they can cover up to a thousand square feet. This one covers up to 750 square feet. We have a big living room. So this is perfect. And it's pretty, right? There are a lot of, but there's a lot of, you can get diffusers all over Amazon, but the ultrasonic diffusers is where I want you to focus your efforts. And the reason why it's called ultrasonic is that it's, it's, it's sonicating the oils with the water and allowing it to come out as a mist. And so what I do, this one runs for 10 hours. I'm not advertising this one. I'm just telling you why I use this one. So mm -hmm. I love it because I can just set it and forget it. I just let it run all day long. And then at night we switch the oils over. So the blend that I wanted to share with you was a sleep blend. And really what the sleep blend is, is to shut down the mental chatter. And so I'm going to be doing, it's called my bedtime sleep blend. I'm doing two drops of clary sage, two drops of cedar wood and two drops of bergamot. And so I've got my clary sage right here. And if, again, if you have a bigger diffuser, feel free to use more. Use two, I would say up to three drops per. I usually put anywhere between six to nine drops of essential oil in my diffuser because I'm covering such a big surface area. So I'm going to do two drops of clary sage, two drops of bergamot, which I just love, and then two drops of cedar wood. Then what I do is I just, I shut the lid now that the water's in there and cedar wood comes out really slow, by the way, because it's a wood oil. So it's got a lot more, it's more viscous. Then I just shut the lid and then I set it for what I want. This one, it, it's two, five or 10 hours. Um, and I just set it and let it roll. Um, and I always have it by the bedside so that when I walk into the bedroom, it's running over the bed and it pretty much puts me to sleep instantaneously. Great. Uh, one more thing we're going to be adding to the Facebook post is a, um, a download from you on the cheat sheet for the different oils for hormones. Is that correct? You guys are going to create That's that? True. 
Yeah, the page wasn't ready on time, so we're going to get this done uh, today. So if you're watching this on replay, probably Saturday onwards, you will be able to uh, get the cheat sheet from Marissa. So one more time, great book, highly recommended, light read, very cool recipes, very versatile. Don't, get, don't let the um, title Mom's Guide make you think that it's for kiddos. It's not. It's for us as well. It's just there are verifications uh, of um, modifications for you know, like in case there is, um, you have, uh, you have kids at home or grandchildren at home. My audience, Marisa is a little bit older, like the 45 to 65. That's my, that's my audience. So not that many women with kids. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, any other final, how much do you have still a few more minutes or you need to, I think I have a few more minutes. I don't have a clock in front of me. I think I have a few more minutes. Um, yeah, I was going to say, you know, one of the things that the book offers, you know, I, for me, I, when I had estrogen dominance, I, it was a lot to do with toxicity, stress, right? It was a combination of, of having too much on my plate and then, you know, slathering myself with synthetics, not eating the right foods. I mean, there's so many pieces that come together. So I am so blessed to get to work with Magdalena and that we're such close friends because she and I are aligned on the same mission. I mean, everything that she said today, I'm aligned with. So the book is not only, you know, recipes for mood support, energy, hormones, but there's also self-care practices, green cleaning, and then personal care recipes as well that are not difficult to do. And I have a ton of bath recipes, tons of sprays. So you're going to find that anything that you're looking for is really going to be in there. Um, mm -hmm. So I hope that you go and grab it. And yeah, there's only one little chapter that's dedicated to some recipes, even for children, but you know, that can be a, that can be a chapter you can skip. So no worries there. Yeah, there's many questions coming in that we've already answered. So if we're not answering that, it's because it's already been uh, addressed earlier. So what I'll suggest is just give it like 10 minutes after we hang up and then you can watch the replay then. Um, the questions coming in about like rheumatoid arthritis, Lisa Smith is asking. And um, Marissa, I'd love to hear more on that. This is, but at first I just want to say, rheumatoid arthritis is actually a, a pretty nasty autoimmune condition, right? That attacks your joints. And so if you think about it, it is the function of the immune system that is turning against your own, um, your own Body. tissue, yeah. right? And mm -hmm. so whether Hashimoto's is the thyroid, you've got uh, large intestine, small intestine diseases, you've got systemic ones like lupus, really nasty one, really serious autoimmune condition. Um, and, and then you have rheumatoid arthritis. So, you know, I would love to hear your take on it, Marisa, when it comes to like reduction of pain and inflammation in the joints. But before that, I just want to say, please do address the health of your gut because it's an autoimmune disease, which starts in the digestion. Um, it's very internal. It's, you've got to address the immune system. You're going to calm it down. Essential oils will, it's just a, a tool to bring in. Diet is going to be the starting point. And a little, um, hint here Rheumatoid arthritis, people respond really well by getting off nightshade vegetables if you haven't done that yet. So potatoes, tomatoes, eggplants, uh, peppers, as well as goji berries, unfortunately. You're going to get off those and not to mention gluten and dairy, all these highly inflammatory sure. foods. Start off with that yeah. first. Absolutely. Um, food, I mean, food, first and foremost, you'll see that all my other books were on nutrition. So food, most importantly, my first book was on antioxidants. And um, it is paramount. You, you know, you're not going to have the success with oils if you don't take care of your body in terms of what you put into your mouth. Um, although there, but there are oils that will soothe joint and muscles, particularly joints. And so my go to essential oils for soothing joints are going to be wintergreen, frankincense, spearmint, marjoram, um, lavender. These are all joint soothing oils. If you can get your hands on birch, that's wonderful. Copaiba, that's another one. But my joint and muscle soothing blend, um, I have, it's in a roller bottle as well. Um, and it's just six drops of lavender, six drops of frankincense, four drops of spearmint or peppermint, whatever you prefer, um, and then four drops of marjoram. And so that's in the book as well under joint and muscle soothing blend. I have a lot of blends for headaches. I mean, name it. But if you're looking for a topical application, because I know a lot of you want something topical, remember wintergreen, frankincense, marjoram, peppermint, lavender, copaiba, those are going to be your go-to oils for helping to soothe um, angry, red, irritable joints. Awesome. All right. So great. Uh, this is actually kind of funny because we have not rehearsed what is it we're going to talk about, just very broad strokes, like, okay, let's just talk about hormones. And that's, that's my audience. 
And uh, I'm like throwing all these different conditions at you and you just seems to be not only having answers, but like everything is in that little book. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank goodness for that book, right? It's such a great resource. I can just yeah. open it up and be like, okay, there it is. I mean, I know the oils, but I love giving you very specific recipes because I know a lot of people are like, just give me the recipe. Just give me how to use it. And it's yeah. all in there. Yeah, awesome. So scientifically backed up, really, like I just looked at it, like you've got all the medical references right at the back of the book. It's all here. Um, great book, get it. And um, if you want to play with essential oils, the link is, if somebody of you are asking, what is the title of the book? It's right on top of the page or below somewhere is in the title of the Facebook talk with an Amazon link. I made it really simple for you. All right, you guys have a wonderful weekend. Head out, step playing. <laughs> I'm definitely going to try a couple of things that just you inspired me today uh, with that, Marissa. Thank you so much, Magdalena. It was such a pleasure. I'll do my best to come on over to your page and answer some of the questions specifically after I've got some time. I'm sorry we didn't get to everyone's questions, but thank you guys for showing up. I, I love sharing this information. It was such a pleasure to be here. Awesome. All right, everyone. Have a great weekend. Go play. All right. Bye for now.